friends at Birch Gold Group, it is possible that you can own physical gold and silver in a tax-sheltered retirement account. And that's right. One thing you can do to secure your family's savings is use gold and silver to diversify. And you can diversify in a, maybe an old IRA or a 401k for no money out of pocket, by the way, into an IRA or gold and silver. So visit birchgold.com slash end time and receive a free no obligation info kit. Also, um, it, it just basically helps you learn the role precious metals can play in your overall saving strategy. So, visit birchgold.com slash end time today. Also, I want to let you know an upcoming prophecy conference that my wife and I will be at. It's at the Eastern Washington University at the Pence Union Building, 926 Elm Street, up there in Cheney, Washington. It's just south of, I know we've been on the radio for years in Spokane, Washington. This prophecy conference is going to be, what, 15, 20 minutes south of there. And it's going to be October 26th, 7 to 9 p.m. And I'm going to be teaching the new lesson, Green Horseman of World War III. We'll hang around later, answer questions. It's going to be a great time. And so looking forward to being with you guys up there in the Spokane, Cheney, Washington area uh, coming up here in just a few weeks. All right. Now, the, the mission of End Time Ministries, this is our, our mission statement to preach and teach the gospel of the kingdom of God to every person on earth because the end time is right now. We're preparing people for the second coming of Jesus Christ. So, in order to do this, end time ministries must retain the ability to proclaim the gospel and to educate people on the prophecies of the Bible throughout the end time. Now. The Bible says, you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. There are people that would like to hinder our ability to teach the truth. There are some that would like to, to silence us. Because we talk about LGBTQ issues, we talk about abortion, we talk about um, the, the propaganda of the United Nations, we, we expose the world government, we're exposing the world religion, We'll expose the Antichrist and the false prophet. I mean, we're, we're exposing things that they don't want you to know about. We're exposing the central bank digital currencies for what they really are, the global digital ID. We're, and we're saying, don't take that. They don't, uh, you know, it, when, whatever the mark of the beast is, we'll be standing up on this desk screaming, don't do this. And so they're trying to silence our voice when we talk about the true narrative of the, um, the, the vaccines and all kinds of different things that have happened. Just We have people, YouTube, Facebook, um, and Google, and I mean, they just, they will censor us like there's no tomorrow. We've been, our, our um, monetary, the, the, uh, we've been demonetized on YouTube forever now because they simply do not want you to know what we have to say on certain issues. All I have to do is talk about one or two sentences in a program and they'll completely censor it. So, conservative voices are being censored in publications, uh, college campuses, television and radio broadcast, and on the largest speaking platform on the planet, which is the internet. And we've got to resist these efforts in our society. Elon Musk, he's probably one leading the way in, in many ways by buying X and, um, or by, I, I, I can't even remember what he bought, but he called it X now, and I think it was Twitter, and he's saying, I want people to be able to have free speech. He said, if it's illegal, we're, gonna, we're not going to allow that, but other than that, people should be able to have free speech and, and argue against or to dissent from things that they don't want in their family and things like that, information. Because really, information, the, the battle really is right here between your two ears. It's the battle for the minds of the population. And so that's why there are people trying to censor us so heavily. Censorship will be the, of utmost importance to the Antichrist and his world governing system in the end time, which will agree with um, the, much of the leftist ideologies that are propagated today. 
the Antichrist message will be a message of deception. The Bible tells us this over and over. Revelation 16, 13 through 14 says, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, which is Satan, out of the mouth of the beast, the Antichrist, and out of the mouth of a false prophet, which will be a future pope. And these are the spirits of devils. Well, how are we going to be able to combat that? We're going to speak the truth. Jesus said again, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. So, will there be those throughout the end time that are proclaiming the truth? Absolutely, 100%. Jesus said, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. That's Matthew uh, 24, 14. So even during the reign of the Antichrist, the, pro the, the prophet Daniel knew that there would be those who would not cave to the worldly pressures. They would be strong and teach others. Uh, the Bible says this will be Daniel 11, 32 and 33. And such as do wickedly against the covenant, shall he the Antichrist corrupt by flatteries. So this lets us know the timing of all of this. This is during the time of the Antichrist that the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. There will be those who try to stop us from spreading the gospel and instructing others on Bible prophecy. There always has been and there always will be. But the question is, is this going to silence end time ministries? The answer is no. Absolutely no. However, there are people who are going to try, right? And they're trying right now. But I want you to consider this. Let's talk about the freedom of speech and our forefathers, because a lot of kids are not getting taught this in schools nowadays. Why? It's another form of propaganda, another form of indoctrination, another form of freedom of speech, and that is just don't teach them those things. They won't be able to talk about it if they don't even know about it in our history. Well, I have, I have come to love history. You know, when we talk about our forefathers, after defecting from England, because of the tyrannical rule of King George, our forefathers, they sought to build a new country that was governed by the people. The, they were educated men, and they knew that over time, there would be those that would try to uh, usurp authority over free American citizens. And in order to declare our freedom from uh, um, oppression and provide a safeguard against a tyrannical government ever enforcing its will upon free people, the original founders wrote the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. And these documents clearly define the mindset of our forefathers in the late, uh, what, 18th century. So the second paragraph of the Declaration of Independence states this, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator. It does not say that they're endowed by their government. It says that they are endowed by their creator, God, with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's why we have the Second Amendment, to protect our life. And that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, but here it is, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That's you and me. That's why if we lose our power to have a free and fair election in the United States, that takes away the, the power of the governed to manage the government because it's of the people by the people for the people it's and we're supposed to be able if you don't want somebody in the government you're supposed to be able to get them out and vote in people that do what the people want but when you take away a fair election that does away with that right however i want to focus on the first amendment to the constitution it says this congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people 
peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. So, we're supposed to be able to voice a dissenting opinion in America. Limited government, this is what the Constitution is, it limits the government. Freedom to practice my religion, freedom of speech, no conservative censorship, and the right to peacefully petition the government for resolution to problems and complaints. But that sounds great, doesn't it? That's the way it's supposed to work. And you know, even though I believe the United States is still the greatest nation on the planet, I wonder what our forefathers would think of our present governmental oversight and the seizure of power and our government's willingness to yield our sovereignty to a world governing body. Remember, I said the problem is at the national and the international level. So when an entity rules by executive fiat, it becomes hard to back um, to go back to the structured system that checks and balances. I mean, that what what each other does, right? They know. I know you can't do that because of this, and this is the ramifications. And you can't. It's checks and balances. That the 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 original gold standard was a checks and balances against inflation in America. And when they went off of that in the 70s, everything went haywire, didn't it? So discussion and disputes, that's what allows the citizens' viewpoints uh, a say in what happens in our nation. They want to dissent, they want to get rid of all dissenters, though. They want to, no, you can't voice your opinion. You're either going to say what we want or you're causing harm. It's a hate crime, and you can eventually go to jail for that. That power cannot come solely from one man in the White House, or one man who's the UN Secretary General of the United Nations, or one man who would be the Antichrist in the future. No, that's what they're trying to do, but we cannot allow that to happen. There has to be a, a stop to this growing trend. And if the government is able to um, restrict our religious liberties, and even funding our vehicles, our funding our health care, our roads and bridges, our electricity, uh, care for our elderly, and the voting system. And then your president comes along and is signing executive order after executive order and just governing like that. And and you know if they're if they're executive orders that are pro-American and do what the American people want, that's one thing. That's the government doing what we want them to do. But when it's executive orders that are giving, yielding up much of the sovereignty of the United States of America to a foreign entity, then that's anti-American, and the American people, at least most of them, would not vote for that. Regardless of what the news tells you, I think the majority of American people are pro-American. And there are some here who hate America. I understand that. But I want us to get America back to Judeo-Christian principles, to have a spiritual revival and everybody to be saved. That's what I want. That's my goal. And, but this is boots on the ground. This is the, this is the, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where, you know, this is, this is it. This is where the things we're going to live through here in the end time, even with the Antichrist. The Antichrist is going to be what I'm talking about today on steroids. So... If, if that's the way our country is run, Americans are going to be left no choice, no choices or freedoms, right? If the, if the government just hammers down and takes away our ability to dissent. Now, as we busy our lives with our, uh, you know, our, our democracy, you know, if, as we busy our daily lives, let's say, in many ways our democracy is fading away. And I don't want you to think, well, all hope's lost and... You know, where America is just going to be burned up tomorrow. That, I'm not saying the sky is falling tomorrow. It's not what I'm saying. I'm telling you what people are trying to do, and it's setting the stage globally for the reign of the Antichrist. Is where, where we're all headed here. We're in the end times. You can see all this stuff happening. The Antichrist is only going to have three and a half years to reign, so he's going to have a very short period of time. He's not. He's going to. Have to he's not going to come on the, the on the end time scene and say, "Hmm, let me see." Uh, I, I probably ought to figure out a way to, to rule the world so 
I'm going to establish a world government, a world, forget what the religions will establish a world religion, and then I'm going to establish a global economic sanctioning system to force compliance to my edicts and my will. It's not going to happen. He's going to usurp authority over an already fully functioning world government. He's going to be in cahoots with a fully functioning world religion, and there will already be a global ac economic sanctioning system put in place. And that's what we are seeing being established as we speak. The people that are trying to create a world government are the ones that are trying to silence the dissenters. The world the religion is even on board with it. But the, they're trying to silence the dissenters. Anybody who would balk against this, you be quiet. we got to silence your voice. Anybody would say, oh, here's what the world government's really doing. We've got to silence them. we got to censor them. We can't be exposed for what we really are. And so the, the machine that the Antichrist will eventually usurp authority over, that is being built and all the pieces are being put in place as we speak. That's the goal of my program today, to show you that. And so if the trend continues, it'll be hard to write this sinking ship on it. I mean, this government takeover is, think about the news. It, it is so sugar-coated. It, it, it's good-sounding intentions of creating a, a, a green earth for everybody and taking care of our grandparents and the government will take care of them for you. And these, these, um, you know, we will, uh, we'll, we'll pay off your college tuition, and we're going to fund your health care because nobody should be left behind. And all of this stuff. The health care is not a human right. Where did we get that at? And I, I don't have a, a health care plan here at End Time Ministries. I, I and I, I pay for one out, out of my own pocket that we've saved, me and my wife. It's not a human right. The government doesn't owe me a health care plan. I work very, very, very hard to pay for some health care for me and my wife. And we don't have a, a health care plan here at time. And if you're blessed to have one, your factory or wherever you work, your corporate entity pays for a health care plan, that's great. But it's not a human right. Our government shouldn't tell us that. Here's what's happening, though. Our government wants to have a health care plan for people so they can own them. There's a million strings attached. If somebody can give you a, uh, uh, something, then they have the ability to take that away, you understand. There's always, if the government, folks, you don't want anything from the government. And the government, there's always a million strings attached to it because there are people that are always trying to strengthen the government and give the government more power and when they can give you things and be able to withhold that later on then they're gaining in power you understand they have they can lord over you well if you're not going to do this if you won't take this vaccine then and i'm i don't care whether you take the vaccine or not that's up to you i'm just saying for instance in the future if you won't take this vaccine that we want you to take then we can withhold your subsidies you think that's not happening around the world or if you won't take this national ID card that we want you to have, then we'll withhold your government subsidies. Now think about what's going on here. This is the reality of what's going on in our world right now. And they do not want me to be able to speak to you about it. That's why we're being censored so heavily. They're trying to take away yours and my freedom of speech. The voice spoke to me.
links to try to prey on people's minds. I mean, it's easy to prey on someone's mind in the midst of a stressful situation, like a, a hurricane in North Carolina, let's say, or even a, um, you know, a threat of a pandemic, even though there's not a pandemic. Oh, there's a pandemic coming. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, the toilet paper starts flying off the shelves. And I mean, it's easy to prey on people's minds in a, in a, uh, a, a, a stressful situation. I mean, uh, let me change propaganda. The earth's going to burn up, so go out and buy an electric car. And, you know, to make solutions sound like relief from the government. The government is here for you. The government can take care of you. And from all your worries in life, look to the government. Now, that this is what's going on in America and in on the global governing stage. But walking down this path, it leads to more destruction in the end. Not, not the rosy feelings that initially that it invokes, right? I mean, these are solutions to the issues that we face today and that don't have to include federalizing every aspect of our lives. And uh, I can look to God. I don't look to the government for solutions to things in my life. Lord Jesus, help me every day. I need your help. I need you. I'm, I'm going to spend eternity with Jesus Christ. I'm not going to spend eternity with the government of America. No. I'm not looking to the government for help in time of need. And, you you know, you say, well, you know, what about FEMA? Yeah, what about FEMA? You heard about that st the stuff going on in the news lately? And they're saying that, uh, well, the government, uh, Kamala Harris and different people are saying that, well, we don't have any funds from the government to send uh, to the people of North Carolina these relief efforts, but boy, we'll sure send uh, mil tens and tens of millions of dollars to the people, to help the people in Lebanon. Well, what about our people right here in North Carolina? I'm not looking to the government to help me with anything, okay? So, since the foundation of America, men and women have worked hard pursuing their dreams, their, their hard-earned money being used as they saw fit in order to better their lives, to better their, their family, their situation. A nation founded on individualism and freedom to choose one's own destiny, not the group or the, they, the, the people that are socialists, communists, for the common good, okay? And most importantly, to worship God and practice our religious beliefs without government interference. Our founding fathers, they didn't seek to control every aspect of the lives of its citizens. They had come out from that under King George. But today's government is doing just that on a national level and an international level. So let me talk to you about the international sphere. I may have mentioned this the other day, but I, I want you, you've got to understand what's going on because they have just turbo, turbocharged globalism in the world. They are turbocharging their efforts to have a world governing body in the end time. The one that's going right now, the United Nations, it's a paper tiger. We've got to set that thing on fire, right? And they got to create a new one. So what they had on September, man, what was it? 22 and 23, they have what was called the summit of the future. And it was a deliberation over how the world body, the United Nations, should move forward. How do we have the, how do we get more in the more uh, dictatorial sphere? So in the face of, of crises, let's say wars, rumors of wars, economic downturns, social unrest, they're just trying to keep you scared out of your mind. 
how can the United Nations be refashioned into an effective system of global governance? They want to be able to govern you and me. The United Nations, they're not even the United States government. Uh, or or the, in, in my sense, they're, they're, not, they're not even part of Texas, or they're not part of, of uh, Plano, Richardson, Dallas, Texas. They, they're a, 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 a foreign entity. Well, as the revised draft of what they, the, 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 the nations of the United Nations, the, the member nations, signed on to the Pact of the Future, that's the summit's core document. It states, I'm quoting, our challenges are deeply interconnected and far exceeded uh, the exceed the capacity of any single state alone. The only they can only be addressed collectively. All right, now you've got to understand collectivism, and I, I, most people don't even talk about collectivism. They don't have a clue what it is. But there are many people that are in these globalist, boy, they know very well what collectivism is. This was the heartbeat of the summit of the future, to muster collective action at the global level over and above the capacity of any single nation. Thus, the United Nations must be reformed to meet these, let's say, so-called international challenges, okay? So, think about this, communism, Nazism, fascism, socialism, they all gravitate towards a bigger and bigger government, giving the government more power. Because that is the logic of their ideology. They could care less about you, and they could care less about me. The Antichrist could care less about anybody but himself. When he comes on the scene, he's going to want all the power. He's going to want people to actually worship him. This is the Bible. Read Revelation 13, folks. And so that's what all of these, communism, Nazism, fascism, socialism, all of them are designed to give the government more power and have people be slaves to the government under the term collectivism. All problems must be solved by the state, must be solved by the government. The more problems there are, the more powerful the state must become. That's why they, they create, if there's not a problem, they'll create one. And once we get on that slippery slope, there's no place to stop until we reach the end of the scale, which is absolute total 100% totalitarian government regardless of what you name what name you give it regardless of how we relabel it and make it seem like new or different collectivism is totalitarianism that's the essence the core of the pact for the future it leads to the stunning realization that communism fascism nazism socialism um neoconservatism liberalism the the new deal progressivism the great society technocracy, um, the new world order, mo most of the other political nostrums <laughs> or of our century, they merely are variants of the same thing. And it all boils down to collectivism. Collectivism is the umbrella. More power for the government. More power. we got to create all these different uh, scenarios that are going on and the government is your savior. Look to the government. Okay? It just gives more and more power. That's why we don't want anything under the umbrella of collectivism here in the United States of America. Because the United States of America was created so that people could be free. To be free to worship whoever you wanted. To be have the freedom of speech. One of the major tools to help the UN renew trust in globalism is controlling information. As the Pact of the Future makes clear, it calls on governments to address the so-called, and I'm quoting here, disinformation, misinformation, hate speech, and content inciting harm. That depends on the individual, right? Including content disseminating through digital platforms. Of course, hate speech, that was a term that was introduced into the UN lexicon by the, um, the mass murdering Soviet dictatorship to describe speech that it hated. But think about this, if somebody, what they want to do is, is that if, if, if they're pushing uh, transgenderism, 
if a, a, a man who says, I'm now a woman, if I say anything against that, they, they're getting to the point where they would consider that hate speech, and I could be tried for that. That's where they're wanting to get to. So that no matter what, oh, Dave, you're talking about human-induced global warming, which leads to climate change. You're saying that that's a hoax and that there's no truth to that and that the Earth is not warming up to the point where it's going to burn up, and that's our false narrative. Dave, you can't say that because that's hate speech against the world, against the Earth. And the Earth is actually part of the human family. You say, who, who brought that up? Look at the Pope's encyclical, Laudato Si. They're all in this together, everybody. Even though I'm not doing anything to heat the planet up. Think about that. So added to the pact, the pact of the future, were annexes, including the Global Digital Compact, to have the UN take the lead on regulation of, get this, the digital realm, all of our data. The, imagine the United Nations governing the internet. Boy, you talk about censorship. Imagine how they would do their algorithms at that point. Artificial intelligence, the, the United Nations governing all of artificial intelligence, and much more. The digital realm. And eventually, if we went completely digital and moved off of all of our physical currencies, our finances. That's why they want to, they're adding all of this. They know to turbocharge world government that they've got to control the digital sphere, the internet of everything, the internet of things, everything, the economy, it's all going digital. And they see freedom of speech as a hindrance to realizing their global governing dream. Listen at this. The Newsmax just published an article. And the, in essence, the article states that a known globalist, or John Kerry, explained that the key problem with the United States is the First Amendment, folks, is our freedom of speech. Yes. Recently, during the United Nations General Assembly meeting in New York, John Kerry, who is a globalist, by the way, he made remarks that revealed his and other globalists uh, complete disdain for the very system that makes their power possible, and that's democracy. He made it clear that democracy, with its checks and balances and protections for individual freedoms, was the key problem impeding the progress of the World Economic Forum's agenda. And so what does John Kerry think the solution is? Well, of course, censorship, control, and the silencing of all dissent. And, you know, the mindset's not new, right? I mean, in fact, it's the age-old promise of a utopia. Look to the international community. Look to the United Nations, the world government. A, a, a better tomorrow for everybody, used by both communists and fascists. This, this uh, utopian society that the government will create for you and take care of all your needs. Just bow down to us and become our slave. The only problem is that this better world always comes at this terrible price, the death of individual freedoms. They've got to get rid of the freedom of speech. Globalist dream is to crush the free press. That's why End Time Ministries and all these other conservative entities, these conservative voices, they are just silencing, silencing. Tucker Carlson, Ben Shapiro, um, uh, Dennis Prager, uh, Louder Than Crowder, Stephen Crowder. I mean, all you name it. I mean, all of the conservatives, they're just tightening the screw. Censor, censor, censor. Oh, you can't talk about human-induced global warming, which leads to climate change as being a, a hoax. Uh, a Glenn Beck would be another one. End Time Ministries is right in there with all of them. One of the most alarming elements of Kerry's remarks was his open contempt for the freedom of speech here in America. That guy's an American, folks. But I would say not really. He's almost... A, a, an, an individual who believes in the world government. And 
he lamented 